The tuple of TU-14T flies out in War Thunder. Let's check it out. The TU-14 was an evolutionary design resulting from the lessons learned with several prototype designs in the immediate aftermath of World War II. Tupolev had converted the TU-2 piston-engined light bomber into twin jet engines as the TU-12 to gain experience with jets, which eventually led to the Type 73. The 73 was a clean sheet design, but the first version actually used three jet engines and lost out to the simpler IL-28. However, Tupolev wasn't discouraged and refined the design into the twin-engined TU-14. The third engine was replaced with a tail gunner, and its navigation equipment was significantly improved. The new TU-14 first flew in 1949, and its performance was evaluated as being, well, incredibly similar to the IL-28, and it was rejected again by the Air Force since it really didn't offer any new advantages. The plane was saved, though, as the Soviet Navy posted a requirement for a long-range torpedo bomber. Tupolev was able to rework the design quickly, as it needed only trivial changes to meet the Navy's requirements, and without any competition, it entered production as the TU-14T in 1951. The TU-14 served as the Soviet Union's last dedicated torpedo bomber throughout the 1950s, and was upgraded in service with the capability to deploy naval mines, but doctrine changed as naval warfare was advancing, and it was withdrawn from service in 1959. In the end, the TU-14 was a fairly minor bit of Soviet aviation history, but it provided experience that was useful in the development of the highly successful TU-16 bomber that came later. Primary sources disagree about the production run, with totals between about 90 and 140, and there are rumors that a few dozen were given to China, but I wasn't able to confirm that confidently enough to be sure. What we get in War Thunder is the Tu-14T, a jet torpedo bomber in rank 5 of the Soviet tech tree at battle rating 8.0. The Tu-14 doesn't get any advanced combat systems, but it does get the optical bombsight view, which ends up being pretty important. The plane gets a pair of NR-23 cannons in the nose firing forward, and another pair in a defensive tail gunner turret. The ammo belts are different for each, and the tail gunner doesn't get a stealth belt, so they're gonna know you're shooting at them. Notably, the tail gunner actually gets some basic armor protection. For loadouts, this jet can take a reasonable selection of bomb types and quantities, for a light bomber anyway, all of which are carried internally. The FAB 1500 and FAB 3000 stand out as being especially potent for use against ground targets, as they have an enormous blast radius and can easily take out clusters of targets, or even hardened targets, on a near miss. The torpedo you get is the 4536 MAN. This actually ends up being pretty difficult to use effectively due to the drop speed. You need to be flying under about 370 kilometers an hour and under 100 meters altitude in order to safely drop the weapon, and lining up attack runs can be problematic in a large jet bomber like this. It does have good range though, and more on that later. In terms of flight performance, the Tu-14 is a kind of lumbery jet bomber. The rate of climb isn't impressive, and with a full bomb load, even runway fighters are going to be able to intercept it without a lot of trouble. The acceleration is pretty bad, especially at low speeds, and the plane gets a set of radio boosters when it's doing a runway takeoff. But remember, you don't actually need to use the boosters, and you can take them with you for a little jolt later on. As for its top speed, the Tu-14 isn't especially fast, and it can have trouble trying to outrun fighters. It tops out at a little over 800 kilometers an hour, but given the lackluster acceleration, it can take a while to actually get up to those speeds, especially if you're trying to climb. Being a medium bomber, this jet isn't winning any points for maneuverability. It can occasionally get one singular tense, good energy turn, depending on speed and altitude, but its energy retention in a turn is awful, and consider this the obligatory reminder that despite having some forward-facing guns, this isn't a dogfighter. 
you can sometimes get air-to-air -air kills with it in opportunistic situations, but basically any dedicated fighter can outmaneuver the TU-14 fairly easily. It's also important to watch the speed in a dive, as this jet will rip its wings off at around 900 km an hour, which is going to influence any attacks from high altitude that you want to make. You get a huge air brake though, so that helps, and the plane has combat flaps, but you can only deploy them up to around 575 km an hour, so their usefulness is limited and very situational. How you fly the Tu-14 in air battles, like other jet bombers at this BR, is often going to depend on the matchmaker and your teammates. When nobody beats you out to the bases, a few of your medium loadouts can destroy them in one pass, and my personal preference is usually the load of six Fab 500Ms, as they can take out a base and they have a decent blast radius, so if you don't get to hit a base, it's pretty easy to shift your focus onto hitting ground units instead. In air combat, well, you'll sometimes be able to get an opportunistic attack and third-party someone who's fighting one of your buddies, or maybe swat out a strike jet that's returning from a bombing run who doesn't realize you have front guns, but this just isn't a fighter, so try to stick to bombing. The tail gunner can still be situationally useful, and I've personally had above average luck using it to get people off my tail. The other good news is that the plane can actually survive a surprising amount of damage sometimes, and I've had missions where I landed safely back at the base, missing half of a wing or most of the tail. With that said, the plane is incredibly vulnerable to missiles, and even entry-level stuff like the AIM-9B is going to be a major threat, so try to evade missile throwers whenever possible. For close air support, the Tu-14 can have some fun with its larger bombs, but some of the same caveats from air battles still apply. It's highly vulnerable to SPAA and air interception, so despite being reasonably tough, I found this plane a bit less survivable out over a ground battle than it is flying in air battles. The last thing to mention is the torpedo. You'll almost never get a chance to use it in War Thunder's current game modes, and the torpedo actually ends up being kind of difficult to deploy, as you need to be flying under 100 meters and under about 370 kilometers an hour in order to drop it. The jet isn't especially maneuverable at super low altitude and speed, so you have to line up your attack well in advance. To ensure a hit, try to drop about one kilometer from your target and aim about two boat lengths ahead if it's moving. Against stationary targets, you can just aim center of mass from around three and a half kilometers out. Visually, the Tu-14 is, in my opinion, not a good-looking plane. It's probably the ugliest jet bomber in the game. The tail gunner station kind of looks like an anteater or something, and the cockpit section is just weird. Plus, only one camo pattern. Low marks for the visuals on this one. Landing isn't too bad as long as you can line up your approach at least two or three kilometers out. The Tu-14 can safely drop gear and landing flaps a little over 400 kilometers an hour, and it gets a drag chute, so it's easily one of the more simple bombers to land. The cockpit is awful. Poor visibility, low poly model, and low resolution interior with drawn-on instruments. I cannot recommend this plane for VR. Just awful. To close out on the Tu-14T. This plane has a reasonably good bomb load for a jet bomber at this BR. The tail gunner isn't completely useless. And it gets a torpedo. However, its overall flight performance isn't great. It's highly vulnerable to SPAA and missiles and you'll never really get a chance to actually use that torpedo. The final verdict on the Tu-14T is that this is a fairly typical bomber for its BR. The IL-28 has better flight performance, but the Tu-14 has heavier bomb loads, and it can carry a torpedo. Maybe someday we'll actually get some ships to attack. As always, thanks for watching.